The following podcast is a deep, shallow dive production. Okay, let's go. Happy Friday, everybody. Hey, I know I've thanked you guys before on episodes the next day, but I want to thank you again for yesterday. I know it was definitely a little bit of a different episode that went a totally different direction, but I'm really glad that it happened. And to be honest, it's got me rethinking a lot of stuff with this podcast. And I think you're going to see a lot of the changes that I'm going to make moving forward. But big thanks again to my good friend, Lenny. I really enjoyed our conversation, and 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 honestly, you, you really inspired me yesterday to obviously record the podcast the way I did, but even more than that, you really caused me to rethink a lot of the a lot of the things and the directions that I've been taking, and like I said, I think moving forward, we're going to see, you guys are going to see a little bit of a more balanced, I guess reaction, not reaction, a little bit of a more balanced overall approach to all this with the concept of searching for the truth, with the concept of calling a spade a spade, with the concept of the lens of common sense, like all that stuff is going to be there and we're going to get into a lot of different things. And you know what? It's going to be raw and real and maybe previous posturing that I did, honestly, probably without even knowing that I did it. Uh, I'm going to stop doing that. And God, I don't know. That was very impactful for me yesterday. That, that whole process was like cathartic. And if you don't know what cathartic means, I'll save you from looking it up. It's basically providing like psychological or emotional relief through the process of communication. And that's what it really did to me. At least that's what I think it means. Maybe I will look it up after this. Okay. Anyway, again, thank you for all that. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's episode. If you didn't listen, I would love it if you went back and listened and let's move on. So today I'm going to, I'm going to really focus on the follow-up that I was going to do yesterday in regards to The removal of House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, and that was championed by Congressman Matt Gates. And I'm going to really share a couple things about both of those guys. And then more importantly than that, I'm going to talk about really why Matt Gates did this and some of the things that go unnoticed in this situation. And I'm going to bring clarity to really the way our government runs a little bit, which, which is crazy that, oh my God, I've lived here my entire life and I really don't know how that happens in many cases. And then here's the crazier part. None of us do like none of us do. But again, prior to the past three years, four years, and if you want to take it back to 2016, that's fine. But really, between 2016 and 2020, you know, none of us, none of us really cared about any of this stuff. We didn't. I mean, there were things going on, but but be honest, I think the only thing certain people cared about was that Trump sent mean tweets. He was mean. He was a mean guy. He sent mean tweets. But none of us really cared about anything because there was no inflation. You know, the the mortgage rates were not in the six and seven percents like they are now. Gas was not seven dollars, which is what I paid yesterday here in California, which is insane. So none of that stuff existed. None of these social issues existed. None of this other stuff existed. And obviously all of this stuff, you know, goes hand in hand with the way things are governed. And so what I specifically am going to focus on is trying to simplify the omnibus concept and then the concept of continuing resolution. CR. You, you've heard Matt Gates, and, and maybe in a couple of these clips I play, he's going to say, you know, governing by CR, which is continuing resolution. And then you're also going to hear him talk about omnibus. So I thought we'd focus the balance of the day on understanding those two things. And that's it. Again, 
deep, shallow dive. We're going to go deep on those two things, but we're going to keep it shallow by not complicating it to a million other topics. We're going to focus on those two. All right, let's start off with Kevin McCarthy. I, I spliced together a series of clips and Jesse Waters is the main commentator in this, but give this a listen. This is going to be a few minutes long, but I think it does a really good job of basically laying the foundation of what took place from January 15th, which was when he was elected Speaker of the House until Wednesday. Evan McCarthy, the Speaker of the House, has just been bounced. Eight Republicans, angry at Kevin McCarthy, sided with all House Democrats and chopped off his head. Republican Congressman Matt Gates from Florida, the ringleader, if you remember, made McCarthy promise to cut spending and vote on clean budgets instead of force feeding members massive all in one 17,000 page pork filled monstrosities that nobody reads five strokes before midnight to prevent a shutdown. Really quick. So that's what Omnibus is. McCarthy promised he wouldn't pull the stunt anymore. And in exchange, Gates got a very special power. One member of the majority at any time can call for the ouster of the speaker. McCarthy said, OK, and he got the gavel. Now it's a he said, he said over who broke their promises. We have no idea. And we're back to record spending on bills written by lobbyists that you have to vote for in the middle of the night in a cliffhanger or the troops don't get paid. So really quick, I am going to interject a few things. So, you know, this is super important. This is what this whole omnibus thing is. You know, gigantic bills that group a ton of things together, and then they literally make it to where you have no time to read it. And I'm going to give you examples later. And it's an all or nothing situation. And then they pressure, they pressure people with putting the troops in there or putting kids in there, not getting paid. Paid. But like, think about that. They're using very strategic, emotional driven factors to get people to approve gigantic spending bills. And they focus on just those key issues, those key emotional issues. Meanwhile, buried in page 16,426 is another 200 billion to Ukraine. McCarthy says that's not his fault. Gates says it is. Now, we're not doing this anymore, he says, and went from McCarthy's throat. It's the benefit of this country that we have a better Speaker of the House than Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy couldn't keep his word. He made an agreement in January regarding the way Washington would work, and he violated that agreement. We are $33 trillion in debt. We are facing $2.2 trillion annual deficits. We face a de-dollarization globally that will crush Americans, working class Americans. Kevin McCarthy is a feature of the swamp. He has risen to power by collecting special interest money and redistributing that money in exchange for favors. Uh, We are breaking the fever now, and we should elect a speaker who's better. McCarthy says Gates just hates him. It's not about policy, it's all personal. You know it was personal. It had nothing to do about spending. It had nothing to do about Everything he accused somebody of, he was doing. It all was about getting attention from you. That's not becoming of a member of Congress. And regardless of what you think, I've seen the text. It was all about his ethics, but that's all right. Gates is under investigation by House Ethics and believes McCartney didn't really have his back. Now, McCarthy says, I didn't have anything to do with the ethics deal. So who knows what's true? All we know is that Primetime producers watched Republican congressmen argue with each other all afternoon. Think long and hard before you plunge us into chaos, because that's where we're headed if we vacate the speakership. Chaos is Speaker McCarthy. Chaos is somebody who we cannot trust with their word. Kevin McCarthy is a champion for the American dream, and he's proved it as our speaker. We need a speaker who will fight for something, anything, besides just staying or becoming speaker. Under Speaker McCarthy's leadership, our House Republican majority has actually defied all odds and overperformed expectations again and again and again. If this House of Representatives has exceeded all expectations, 
then we definitely need higher expectations. Uh, Matt Gates has some mic drop moments. He does. 210 Republicans backed McCarthy for speaker and 208 Democrats joined forces with just eight Republicans to oust McCarthy. Eight Republicans have more power than over 200 of the rest of the Republicans. By the way, I don't really like this narrative or the way they talk about how eight Republicans have more power than the 210. That, that's actually misleading. And I'll tell you why. You know, at the end of the day, of course, the Democrats were going to vote against or they were going to vote for getting rid of Kevin McCarthy. They had to. They couldn't vote to save him because they can't vote for anything that's pro-Republican. So if any Democrat voted pro-Republican, they would have been ostracized. So then it just becomes a numbers game. They had 210 or 208 plus the other eight. They end up with 216 versus 210. So I, th this is very misleading. I've heard this on so many different news stations and so many Republicans that supported McCarthy said that they, you know, eight Republicans, 4% wield power. It's, it's not that at all. That's very misleading. McCarthy says eight Republicans just handed the House over to Democrats. What, what about these Republicans who are opposed to you? I mean, what has gone on here? What do you think is their thinking? And these, these are the same ones who opposed me before. And so they're turning the floor over to the Democrats. So Congress has 45 days to pass a budget or the government shuts down. But they can't pass anything until they vote on a new speaker. To your colleagues who argue you don't have another name right now. You don't have someone else who could get 218 votes. What do you tell those? Well, I would tell them that for certain, Kevin McCarthy can't get 218 votes. So let's try the next person. Congressman, at this Sir, point, will you be putting yourself forward for the speakership? Absolutely not. I have no desire to be speaker of the House. So Matt Gates doesn't want to be speaker. And he has no idea who else should be speaker. He just knows Kevin McCarthy shouldn't be speaker. And why would anybody want to be speaker if one guy has the power to throw you overboard? The Democrats are laughing at the Republicans now. The Republicans just dethroned their best fundraiser and throttled the impeachment inquiry. So what's going to happen this week? Nothing. Now, that could be good. We don't know. But there's a lot going on in the country. Crime, the border. Stock market today took a bath and the Republicans aren't going to vote for the new speaker until next Wednesday. So we won't really know if this was all worth it until November. If they can get clean spending bills that don't break the bank, that's great. But if they can't and we get another ish sandwich forced down our throats without any idea what's in it, just to keep the government open and rack up more debt, then this was just a big waste of time. Okay, so what he was talking about, and that was Jesse Waters, at the end of that, that's continuing resolution. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit after I play some more clips from Kevin McCarthy and Matt Gates themselves. But the continuing resolution, it's literally just like a Band-Aid approach. You know, okay, hey, we can't agree, so let's just continue what was happening. That that in a nutshell is continuing resolution, and it's the way things have been governed for so long. And it's a joke. This omnibus stuff, along with CR, continuing resolution, is a complete joke. All right, so now let's shift gears. I'm going to play for you about 45 seconds of Kevin McCarthy's, I guess, farewell speech. So give this a listen, and then I'll give you some comments. I ended up being the 55th Speaker of the House, one of the greatest honors. I loved every minute. And the one thing I will tell you is doing the right thing isn't always easy, but it is necessary. I don't regret standing up for choosing governing over grievance. It is my responsibility. It is my job. I do not regret negotiating. Our government is designed to find compromise. I don't regret my efforts to build coalitions and find solutions. I was raised to solve problems, not create them. So I may have lost a vote today, but as I walk out of this chamber, I feel fortunate to have served the American people. I leave the speakership with a sense of pride, accomplishment, and yes, optimism. 
From the day I entered politics, my mission has always been to make tomorrow better than today. I fought for what I believe in, and I believe in this country of America. Okay, I'm sorry. That sucked. That sucked. It was terrible. Yeah, the whole speech was like eight minutes long, and honestly, I'm not going to subject you to that entire thing. He, he, he was so lame. He was like defeated. It was like the, the pouty kid at the playground who's like kicking the ground and kicking rocks. And he's like, oh, shucks. I can't believe they did this to me. You know, none of these guys, honestly, none of these guys are team players. If they truly were team players and if he truly was, you know, a person that put country first, you know, here's the bottom line. And, and you're going to you're going to hear this on Matt Gates's is clips is he got elected in January because he agreed to a certain set of rules and he literally broke every single one of those rules. And he kind of agreed to allow one person to basically bring forward a motion to remove him because he's like, okay, I don't care. All right, I'll agree to anything. Just make me the speaker. And so that's what he did. And it, 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 it backfired on him. But his entire speech, that entire eight minutes, I'm sure you can find it if you want to listen to the whole thing. But I wouldn't even waste your time because he just comes off like so defeated. He sounds so defeated. You know, he's he's still a congressman and a member of Congress and the Republican Party. And so, again, I mean, again, some of you might say, oh, dude, it's that's so much easier said than done. But... You know, if you're really a person that is is putting his his country first and in this case, you're putting your party first, if I was him, I would have came out and said, hey, you know what? Okay, I didn't live up to the things that I promised. I committed and agreed to these things on January 15th. And after 15 rounds of voting, by the way, everybody forgets that. It took 15 rounds for him to finally win the speakership, and he finally won that because he literally agreed to the demands of Matt Gates and a crew of eight other Republicans who said, okay, fine, we'll... We'll elect you speaker, but you have to agree to these eight things. And he agreed to all of them. And he's literally gone back on every single one of them, uh, like a few times. So for him to take a defeatist, you know, attitude, which again, listen to the speech, it's kind of pathetic. I think that's very lame. I really do. I think that's totally lame. And like I said yesterday, before I went off on my diatribe, you know, I judge people on their actions and I judge people on their reactions and his reaction to this and the speech he gave and the interviews he's given, you know, I'm just not a fan of it. I'm not. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is, so on his Instagram, uh, Speaker McCarthy, he also posted uh, a couple funny things. He posted that part of the speech, which I played for you. But then he also posted just a, just a white backdrop with the words, bring it on. He posted, bring it on. So now I'm going to read you some of the comments as people, they brought it on. Okay. I'm not going to mention their names, but here's comment one. They did in fact, bring it on. Comment two, no more money for Ukraine. Well, I guess we brought it on. Number three, What's the response to the Ukraine and Biden agreement you did behind closed doors? Please explain. Number four, actions speak louder than words, and that deal to fund Ukraine behind closed doors is BS. Number five, stop sending all of our money to Ukraine. Fund our own border. Number six, stop funding Ukraine. The people are not in charge of you. Help U.S., 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 There's definitely a theme in those comments. All right, here's the last one, and it was pretty succinct. One simple truth here, we the people have lost faith in your ability to proceed properly as the speaker. You promised a set of things, and we elected you for that, and you have literally gone back on every single one of those things. I'm not kidding. There's at least 3,000 plus comments under his past several posts, and I really did scroll through 
I mean, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them just to try to find something positive, you know, somebody that maybe is on the other side of this and thinks he did a good job and was supportive. And I could not, I literally could not find one comment in scrolling a lot that was, was positive in that regard. So, all right, let me play you a couple things from Matt Gates, And again, you know, make, make up your own mind. I swear I'm not trying to influence you one way or, or the other, but listen to what he says and see if it makes sense to you. And more importantly, if you can poke a hole in it, let me know because I really have not been able to. I don't think voting against Kevin McCarthy is chaos. I think 33 trillion in debt is chaos. I think that facing a $2.2 trillion annual deficit is chaos. I think that not passing single subject spending bills is chaos. I think the fact that we have been governed in this country since the mid nineties by continuing resolution and omnibus is chaos. And the way to liberate ourselves from that is a series of reforms to this body. Okay. So he talked about omnibus and continuing resolution again. So let me get into these things and and try and just simplify it. So with Omnibus, again, that is a type of spending bill that packages many of the smaller appropriation bills, such as defense, education, you know, whatever, whatever the smaller bill is, but they package them all together into a gigantic single large bill that can be passed with only one vote in each house of Congress, meaning that it's literally has to be either passed in the house and the Senate, or it has to be rejected. Like that's pretty crazy. You're lumping everything into one category. And for 2023, that omnibus bill is 1.73 trillion So fundamentally, in addition to just being able to hide things, you know, this, these omnibus bills, they grant a large amount of money and a large amount of power to a very small amount of people. Okay. I mean, that's, that's the reality of it. I don't think that's cool. Okay. So then you've got continuing resolution and basically God, I read up a bunch on this to try to find the easiest way to explain it. And here's the easiest way to explain it. When they literally can't pass what they're intending to pass and do what they're paid to do, they basically pass a CR, which is a continuing resolution, and it's like a temporary stopgap funding situation that puts a band-aid on the problem and gives them more time, okay? That is a super simplified way of doing it. The problem is that should be a anomaly. That should be a last resort, and instead, they're using that as the way to get things done. It, it's literally like kicking the can down the hill, And I'm going to research some of the big ones to give you better examples, but that's fundamentally what it is. You're playing like we did back in Chesterland, Ohio, kick the can. Oh my God. That's what we did as kids to enjoy ourselves. We played kick the can, but you're kicking the can down the hill and you're basically just, you know, setting it up to have to be reviewed again because you couldn't accomplish it on the first time. Okay, so I'm going to play you one more clip from Matt Gates. This dude is like a clip machine or a quote machine, but I'm sorry, he's, he's dropping truth bombs. You know, it's so interesting to watch his speeches on C-SPAN, and oh my God, you've got an entire room of career politicians who are probably just like balling their fists together and wanting to like beat the crap out of this kid but he's dropping bombs he's dropping bombs and again like I said hey maybe I'm missing it so if anybody can poke a hole in what he's saying or has something that you think I should listen to you know please feel free to share that but if not you know Let's not discredit him because of his age or discredit him because of 
what we're hearing about him in the media or anything like that. Let's judge this guy on his actions and then his reactions. And by the way, so the current speaker now, they call him the speaker pro temp. It's some guy named Patrick McHenry. McHenry, I've never heard of him, but he was such a child. He like, when he finally announced the removal of McCarthy, he slammed the gavel. I mean, like smashed it. It's like what you guys should do, smash the subscribe button to my podcast. But he smashed the gavel. And then I'll let Matt Gates tell you what the first thing he did as his as being in charge. He sent everybody home. Listen to this. I do have to offer some pretty sharp criticism of the new pro tem of the House, Patrick McHenry. We met tonight and he sent us home until Tuesday of next week, Eric. We should be here tomorrow working to elect a new speaker, getting onto our appropriations bills and engaging in a, in a negotiation with the Senate to get the government funded. But instead, whoa, these people have got to go home and cry for a week. They've got to go do a week of hand wringing and bedwetting over the fact that Kevin McCarthy isn't speaker anymore. This institution is about more than one man. It's about the job. How about we pass a budget? So McHenry has the power of the speakership now, and literally his first act as the acting speaker of the House was to send everyone home till Tuesday. That's moving in the wrong direction. We got to get a new speaker, and we've got to get leadership to understand a sense of urgency that your viewers and the American people all feel. All right, seriously, I could literally play 10 more amazing clips And again, I'm honestly looking for holes. I really am. I'm looking for holes in what Matt Gates has said and really what he's done because they'll find another speaker. Jim Jordan, guy from Ohio. I I like Jim Jordan a lot. And by the way, dude is like a a badass. He was like a, one of the best wrestlers to come out of the state of Ohio. And Ohio had a lot of good wrestlers. They're actually known as kind of a wrestling state. But I think Jim Jordan was like four-time state champion or three-time state champion as a high school wrestler. I mean, I respect that. Uh, that's discipline. That is some serious discipline to be able to do that. Wrestling in general is discipline, but to be able to be like a two, three, or four-time state champion in a, in a wrestling state, that's legit. So anyway, I highly encourage you guys, if you want to kind of understand a little bit more about this, go to either Matt Gates's or Speaker McCarthy's Instagram and just read the comments. Read the comments for yourself. Read what the American people are saying. You know, don't just tune into Fox or CNN or MSNBC or or anything, really. Read what the people are saying because that is one of the benefits of social media is that we have the ability to kind of crowdsource comments and opinions. So go into their Instagram. That That's where I pretty much find most of this information and obviously the, the stuff I read you earlier. But read what everybody's saying. Truly, there's truly some insightful stuff that people write. Obviously, there's some hilarious stuff too. Actually, there's some really funny stuff. So it's good for a laugh. But it's also good because you'll get to hear what the people think and their views. So anyway, that's it. All right, everybody, have a wonderful weekend. Call a spade a spade. Catch up on your episodes. If you missed any this week, there were some good ones, especially the one yesterday. I'd really love it if you listened to that. And we will talk to you soon. This episode was brought to you by Boost Liquid Vitamins. Wake up, take your boost, start your day. Drink your vitamins, build your immune system with Boost. Available on Boost.com.